All right, this one's me on Podman. It is a way to run uh, containers, aka VMs, aka virtual environments, um, isolated environments. I don't know what you call it, but a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, so someone asked me how to install Fresh RSS. So this is one of the tools you can do it. So this one's Podman. Um, and you, know, you can do a search in here, like just do Fresh RSS. Now, by default, on the newest Podman, um, which Ubuntu I'm using here, NCS here, I'm using a Ubuntu 22.04.1 LTS here, the server. And by default, you can't do the search unless you do, what was that one? Unless you add this into your config here. All right, yeah, this into your config. And you have this line here, and this will um, add in those other repositories of images that is available, right? Mostly just pulling from Docker IO and this other um, site here. But these are the images that is available, and you know people have created these images, so you can search for anything like um, kind of app, you know, search or whatever it is, right? However. Most of the stuff that we're going to be installing is uh, like web services or some type of services. Um, and in here, it's kind of useless because even if you searched it, you still don't have the instructions to, uh, you know, like what ports do I need to mount it on? Which volume do I need to create? If I need to create it, stuff like that. Uh, they don't tell you in here. So it's, the searching in here is kind of useless. I wish there was like another command where they tell you these information that you need, right? So that's why you still have to bust out your web browser and search for fresh RSS Docker. Make sure you search Docker and not Podman because uh, I don't think anyone gives a shit about Podman, right? So um, that's how you will find the images in Google. I really hate doing this stuff like that when um, we're doing this like command line but that's how it works. It just reminds me of Windows, like a bunch of those idiots like going out on the internet and finding uh, EXEs and shit like that. But that's what you have to do here, right? Um, so you go scroll down. When I skip out, uh, skip uh, this compose thing because uh, I think in Podman, they don't have like an official compose. I mean, there's a third party one, but I hear it was jank anyways. So when I use pure command line and that's why I like the pure command line. Uh, there's a lot of like fucking YouTube idiots um, doing these videos, but they always use like portainer. It's, like, it's a front end to um, Docker. And I always hated that. Like I had to follow them, like where they click, what tab they're on, what icons you have to uh, expand and shit like that. It's so stupid. So I'm going to show you just pure command line, right? And this is it, right? No clicking around and all that dumb shit. So, uh, fresh RSS, uh, let me explain you, you know, this thing here. So by default, this is what they give you, right? This Docker, um, you know, command line stuff. What you want to do is change it to Podman and all these other stuff. You can leave it as is. Now, what does this mean here? This is your ID. How do you get that one? Basically, you just type in ID of the user you're currently logged on that you want to use, right? And they'll tell you, you know, your uh, number here. So it's 1000 and that's usually what the default is. Uh, as far as time zone here, if you want to change yours to something else, um, this is the command here. What is it? Time zone, list time zone, right? They give you like a whole list of different um, places, right? If you want to grep it out, you can grep out America and you know, you have a shorter list. You get the idea. And that's all you add in there. Now, as far as the ports and volumes, uh, usually you want to change those, right? Um, yeah, that's the main thing. Like when you're doing this thing here, the ports, if it's like a very common port, like 80, it's a very common port. And if you use this a lot, other containers use 80, right? Uh, and you, you do have to create the volume of where you want to save your configs, right? So the way that this works is that anything on the right side of this colon, 
right? That's inside your virtual environment, your container, your VM, whatever you want to call it, right? You don't change those one. On the right side of the colon, don't change it, all right? Now, on the, the left side, this is your, uh, you know, your um, computer, your host computer, right? So you do want to change it. So if it's a common port, like I said, you want to change it. So what I did here is I changed it to, uh, what's that? 49160. And the way that I use the ports is that I got this on the internet somewhere, but basically if anything's under um, that range, I don't use it. I just use something around this range for custom ports. Anyways, if you want to use um, what I got here for the rules, it's up to you, but you can use any ports you want. Just make sure it's not the same port that you're using on other um, containers, right? So that's what we use there. We use it uh, a different port. So you can change this one to, you know, and that's how you would change it. Now, as far as the volume, basically, where do you want to save it to, right? So I save mine to, um, I created a folder here, all right? Now, I usually save these um, outside of my home folder because when I'm doing this on a server or something like that, I don't want it to be inside of the home folder. Uh, they might have like permission issues and stuff like that. I, I don't do that. I don't do it from uh, the, the user's, um, you know, home folder. So anything like in media, MNT, wherever you want to mount it outside your home folder, that's what I recommend. So that's where it's uh, mounted, right? And basically these are our configs here. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create this one here. So I think we can uh, create this now. No. Real simple. Uh, we'll copy the first command. We'll do it one by one. We'll do uh, make dir of that uh, fresh RSS uh, directory. And it creates it, right? And then the next one is we're just going to run this command. Uh, and this one will pull in the images and all that, which I already pulled in the image. But um, basically, it'll pull in the image from this um, repositories and um you know have our configuration set up here right and uh we'll do that and you see that uh it created that container usually it'll take longer if uh, you, you didn't pull the image it'll actually like download the image it will take a little bit longer depending on how big it is and then it'll create this container for us right so now we can actually do like podman ps all right and now you can see that uh, that image that we uh, just did, and we we recreated a container, and this is our fresh RSS here, All right? Twenty sec twenty seconds ago. And now all you gotta do is connect to that uh, what was that port? If you're doing this locally, it's just uh, you know your local host. But I'm doing this on my server here, and. Um, my server is uh what is that what port is that we do uh, ipa here if you want to look up your ports right so mine is uh 192.168.1.132 uh, right and um that's all you gotta do you, you you copy this and you copy the ports which is uh 40 what is that 49160 and that's what we're gonna do. Um, what is that one here? One nine two. There you go. I have mine here. So this is fresh RSS up and running. All right. Um. Now in here you do all your configurations, which I'm not gonna go into, but you get the idea. You submit. You uh, go to next step. I forgot all of this stuff, but um, you can, you choose your database, which one you want, SQLite, okay. And then you type in your um, username and password or whatever it is that you want to use, right? So I use God mode and, you know, whatever password you have. And uh, submit. And then complete configurations. And then uh, now we just log in. Real simple. And then if you want to add in your... Um, you know your RSS or whatever it is, you can do it here. You get the idea. That's how you would set up a fresh RSS, uh, real simple. And now, whenever you need to um, connect to it, you can do this on your tablet, your phone, whatever it is. 
you just type in your um, IP and the port that you want to connect and um, you know when you're logged in here you just have to type in your password and then that's how you'll read your RSS from uh, the web now this one you can set up to you know do like remote stuff like um, you know a, a Android app and stuff like that it's up to you but anyways that's how you set up um, a fresh RSS container, real simple, right? Um, so that's the command if you want to know, you know, which services that's running. And you see here is fresh RSS, and so on and so forth. If you ever need to stop it and update, uh, real simple, you do podman stop uh, fresh RSS. All right, then I'll stop it. And you can actually remove the container. This not remove your data. This just removes the, um, what is that, the container image. And um, all you got to do is do a pull. What was that one here? You can do a pull. Like if there's like a new image, like if you're updating this thing, you do um, podman pull. And then you type in your um, what is that your uh, URL or whatever it is here, and it'll try to pull in the new image, and then uh, basically you run that same command again here, All right? After you pull in the new image, you just do this again, and it'll create a new um, updated uh, image of that um, container, and that's how you would manually uh, update it in the future if you know there's an, a new image of fresh RSS that you want to use. Otherwise, you don't have to update it. Like, I don't really update stuff unless I know I need something new. Uh, some people, they just want to update everything. I don't do that, right? I only update stuff if I really need, if I know there's a feature I want and I don't want to mess anything up, I'll stick with the what I got, right? Anyways, that's how you set up fresh RSS, real simple. Now, if you're on Ubuntu and you want this to automatically run when it boots up, right? Uh, how would you do that? Real simple. Uh, you create a, well, since Ubuntu uses systemd, this is what you have to do here. Systemd. So we're gonna create uh, this folder here. Uh, real simple, just paste in this um, three commands here. Just control shift V, push enter, and it'll do its thing. Basically what it does is that it'll create uh, this folder in your, uh, uh, was it your home folder your configs user and then um you know it'll generate a podman a system d um services for you all right and it'll, we'll send that to um this place here where it's located and this one tells it to automatically start up once you uh boot up and another command i can't believe this but in ubuntu um, where the hell was that? I think that was in, oh yeah, in Ubuntu, to uh, auto start Podman containers at boot without logging in. Like if you have this on your server, right? When you boot up your computer, you're not gonna log in anything, right? You want the, the, the computer to automatically start these services. So this is what you gotta do. I'm not sure if this is like this uh, Ubuntu only, but I had to do this, all right? So you have to do this command here and uh, you know, you run it. And then this one, if you reboot, you boot up the computer, you don't even have to log in. It just automatically starts the service for you. So you don't have to waste your time like, you know, trying to like manually start it, right? Anyways, that's how you would auto start uh, the containers uh, and all that stuff on Ubuntu. Uh, I'm not sure if it's like globally, but I'm using an Ubuntu server, so that's the only thing I can have, um, you know, uh, knowledge about here, right? So anyways, uh, again, I'm using the Ubuntu's as my server. Is that it? Uh, I think that should be the basics if you ever need to uh, learn how to do it. Um, and in here, you know, you can do, I, I recommend you install like Heimdall. This one's kind of like a... Um, a bookmark or a startup page so this is like my containers here right 
I got different services. And basically all you gotta do is um, once you created your uh, containers, you can actually go in here and add in your um, your services and then you tell it what you know ports is at, what IPs is from. So I got two different um, you know servers so I can have one instance of this and uh, I can go in here. I don't have to remember which port it is. I just have to remember um, my main um, Heimdall. And I have all these other stuff that I can go into, right? Like J Downloader. I can go in here and do my thing, download some stuff. I got my stash, which I don't think I can talk about on YouTube, but uh, in here is pretty cool too for um, all your OnlyFans, uh, you know, videos, right? Um, stuff like that. You know, we have SoulSeek, we have AMU. You get the idea. Um, I'll probably put to talk about some of these services later on um, if people are interested on these container stuff. But really, if you have an extra computer, even an old one, right, dual core, i i3, uh, i5, whatever it is, um, you can run some of these services and put those computers to use. And um, that's what I did. I have like a like my my main computer now is like you know it's very basic, uh, and I have all my um, services you know on my server to do all the heavy work anyways long video but hopefully you understand what podman is and uh, it, it is uh so convenient because in the past if you remember uh when google reader died i had to manually uh well i tried to manually uh uh do uh, was that tiny tiny rss and uh, i remember back then you had to configure it yourself like uh, you had to configure the um tiny tiny rss um, the database, which I think was MariaDB and then some, um, type of web services to host it. So you can do like web services, uh, to do the web UI stuff and you have to make them all talk to each other. That was a pain in the ass to do yourself. You know, now we have containers. That's the way to go. That's the lazy fucking way. That's the, that's the recommended way now. Um, anyways, that is Podman in a nutshell. And uh, one more thing I need to clear up in here, like um, in Podman, their main page, it says alias Docker to Podman. This is stupid, right? I mean, yeah, you can alias anything to anything, but I'm I'm thinking that they want you to believe that this is a one-to-one -one replacement, which it is not, right? I'm going to tell you right now, it is not a one-to-one -one replacement. Most of these images will work with Podman, but there are just some images that will not work. Uh, two on top of my head is like... Uh, Portainer and um, what's the other one? Caliber, like the newest one. It doesn't work with Podman. It only works with Docker, right? So this thing is like good marketing, but it's false information. You know, like uh, they'll probably attract like Docker idiots that comes in here and they're thinking like, oh, it's the same shit. It is not the same shit. It's uh, two different beasts. All right, things like that. So don't do this Ellie's thing that they have in here. It's stupid. All right. Anyways, long video late at night, but uh, that'll be it for this one.